nine of the final round of the 2023 Canadian National Championships, elevated by Thoughtspace Athletics. And thank you to our Patreons of Parks Pro. With you, without you, we wouldn't be here. And PDGA Canada, all that money that you pay for your PDGA membership does go back into women's events, our nationals, provincials, all those wonderful events. Thank you to our lovely tournament sponsors, Thoughtspace, iTech, PDGA Canada, and CNDC Tourism. And here we are, the exciting conclusion, back nine of round three. Canadian Championships Finals. FPO lead card. It's getting exciting up in here. After nine holes, we have Raven Klein sitting in first at plus one. Irina in second with, sorry, uh, Colleen in second with even. Jess Gia in third at plus four. And Irina in fourth, fourth with plus nine. And overall scores, total scores. So Raven is still holding on to her lead at plus five. Um, Colleen at plus 12. Jess at plus 13 and Irina at plus 16. So we've got a big gap there. We're hoping to close on Raven. And we are on hole 10, par three, 330 feet. What a hole, because this is a big water carry. And although it is a short hole, it is a daunting water carry. Typically when you're playing this hole, the wind is coming right at you, as you can see that flag waving. So it is a deadly headwind. You need to throw the disc you trust the most to clear that 300 foot carry. Um, and there is quite an interesting feature on this hole with a little island that people kind of tend to um, air out to. And we had quite a mishap in the first round with a few girls, uh, an entire card having to go onto that island in a little dinghy to get their discs back and throw their second shot. So. Just barely OB. I'd say this the tee shot is quite demanding. It's really pushing a lot of our distance, especially since you're, you know, if you want to get up to the close to the basket, you have to throw a pretty accurate shot, 330 feet, which is, which is quite difficult with the water OB all around you. Uh, common play is a lot of FPOs will throw um, a hyzer kind of aiming left of the water. Um, that way um, you have a more safer landing zone. The, the land is um, a little shorter than 330, so it's a little bit easier of a shot. Raven just goes straight for the basket and crushes one out in circle two. Arena also looks like she's going uh, more of a direct route to the basket, flexing a shot, and she's in. <laughs> That Getting like that nice flex. That was a good uh, turn she had on that disc. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see, uh, there is a path that you'd have to go way left to go, B, um, but that is part of the next hole. So not really in play for this hole, but you can see it there. Got a fantastic spotter here, making sure we get our discs back. Um, I believe that's, is that Jerry, Jerry Ann Bramwich's partner? Um, he was fantastic the whole day, doing all these spotting, waving flags and stuff. Hi, let's go. Let's so I was in fact OB. I was in, um, surrounded by water. Very questionable. It was all rocky, but uh, card call, and I'd say the right one. But had to do a big putt there for the par save. That was clutch. Let's take another look at your huge circle two putt from the edge of the water. Just getting over the rim there. Done. Big shout out to East End Putting League, <laughs> Toronto, oh. and some caddy love from Mike there. Looks like we had some spectators watching, giving Colleen some love. It's, we, love we love to see those putts. So exciting. And Irina in a similar position, but still inbound. So um, luckily going for her birdie putt there. Gives it a good run. She'll, she'll have a tap in for her par. Here's Raven for a really good birdie look. Just a little low, hits the pole, but sets herself up really nicely for that bid. And a great par save from Jess. Uh, she was playing it very safe there at the drive and definitely got rewarded for it. Going and doing a safer bailout drive like that where you're not too worried about distance and then getting the same score as everyone else feels really good. So. 
Shout out to her there. Yeah, that's a big. That's some big brain energy, right? Yeah, there. <laughs> that's that's right because it makes you feel good for the rest of the round, right? Yeah, it really gives you kind of confidence in your game plan that it's working as intended. Here we have another look at Irina's fantastic flex shot. Flexing it over the water. So next hole we have hole 11, par 4, 600 feet. So as you can see, our landing zone is on the left side of the banners and flags. Um, you're basically uh, looking to throw about 270 feet up to this gap and then you have an uphill, um, I don't know, shorter run at the basket here, but it's a little dangerous. You have the OB left and behind, uh, behind and left of the basket on an elevated hill, um, it's very elevated green, so uh, very tricky, especially with all the foliage around it, tough technical approach shot. Um, you know, biggest thing you want to do off the tee is make sure you get left, um, but very tricky with distance wise because you want to make it past that first grouping of trees. And sorry, I have to correct myself or else I would hate myself. Ian Murdoch spotting there. Sorry, Ian. Um, Corey Murdoch's husband, one of our uh, co-TDs at this wonderful tournament and uh, one of our um, biggest supporters of the ODSA. Thank you, Ian. Great here too. Yeah. And similar to what we saw in round one, the tricky part of this shot is getting in bounds without getting too left. Um, there is a gap of trees that you want to get in between and it is very tricky to get that distance without going into the bush, so. Yeah, this raven's in a good landing spot, not too left of that, um, that grouping of trees. She'll, she'll still have a look to approach the basket. So you really have to have a lot of confidence in your disc and trust your throw here in order to, you know, get that distance, but also make sure you're landing in bounds as Irina. Yeah, that was really beautiful. I think there. that's ideal positioning. The mm -hmm. hardest part about this hole is the second shot. Like for us pushing that distance, um, really tough. And then when you get into a spot like where Jess is here, it, it's so, like, as you can see, it's so hard because you can't see. You're blind. There's, look at all this OB she's dealing with that she can't even see. She's not sure where it landed. No one is. And then you get up there and you're just so disappointed. So uh, very, very tricky second shot. Yeah, you, it, it's, it's tough enough to get up on the hill, but then you have to deal with, you know, height control, throwing it over the trees, but also making sure that the disc... Um, you know, doesn't air out too much. Uh, you want it to land, like kind of land straight down and not, you know, go too left into the OB. So oh, that is exactly what I did the first round. <laughs> and you can see me take a deep breath being like, okay, don't do it again. And I just <laughs> did it again. This hole is a really good way of getting into your head. Yeah. Well, with that OB on the left, I was like, you know what? I'm not even mad. It's whatever. I'm not even mad. <laughs> I, I put myself into pretty good position off the drive. Um, and had just similar upshot to what Raven had, but I was just so Very nervous excited. about the yeah. distance, <laughs> and I just went a little too far past the basket, so pretty intimidating hole. Yeah. Definitely worthy of its par four status, but if you get, you know, two two great shots, you can you can have a pretty easy birdie, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. As Colleen has, you know, great run at Ooh. the basket there. I thought that was going to roll away, though. Like, look how close that OB is. It is daunting. It's nerve-wracking. Certainly that is one way to make the course harder and more intimidating is to do that. Um, but when it's constant, it's so nerve-wracking. And... and that's why this is the Canadian, you know, national championships. You yeah. know, they want to make this course in its hardest layout um, with as many challenges as possible, really testing... Yeah. Uh, the players' uh, skills, you know, distance, accuracy, touch, yeah, angle control, all of the above. I feel like this hole really tests a lot of that. And 
How did we all do here? So, yeah, so a few pars um, and a bogey, and you know, not bad overall for the hole. I think one little mistake on this hole, like like Jess had, um, sorry, a double bogey, but it, one little mistake can really put you in such a bad position. And having such a tough drive, that was hard to recover from. So hole 12, this is what I, I think, I, I don't know what their signature hole is, but I would say this, this is crazy long. They've got markers out there on the left side that you can see where we wanna land. And then we are getting as far as we can down and then crossing. So it is typically a standard minimum two shots before you cross for FPO. Um, way more common to do three shots and then cross. Um, but we did uh, see if you want to check out who went across on their third shot, go check out the first round. Quite exciting um, and quite a bomb. So th with this downhill shot, you really can pump it. You uh, do have to be cognizant of that OB on the left side. And um, certainly it's, it's a little bit harder to reach the actual water for us from here, but it is possible. So hanging it out as right as you can and high, it's a pretty safe standard bet. Really like that shape of Raven shot there. Okay. <laughs> it's a little, a little intimidating with the OB on the left side. You never know what kind of skip you're gonna get on this uh, fairway. It's fairly flat and the grass is quite short, so you can get some big skips. So um, I like the play that Irina did yeah. here, hanging it out a little bit more right and then having it crash into the that middle was, of the fairway. That's, you know, That was Irina ideal. clapping as well, if you guys heard that. She is her own biggest supporter. I love it. I hope more people see that and are inspired by it because pump yourself up. Feel good the whole round. She really, it's contagious. Yeah. I loved it. Be your own cheerleader. <laughs> if you don't have one, then just be one. Yeah. Yeah, I love the confidence and... The good energy there good shot from jess she's just behind us and like we said throwing another bomb come back looks like jess gets just a little bit too much turn off her shot i'm sure that's not what she was intending she's probably just trying to land close to the the distance markers uh just to the left of the water but i think if she had more height that would have been mm -hmm. perfect it, it did look like a great line it was just it needed that extra height to have it arrowed a little bit left at the end this, uh, from what I remember, there was a little bit of wind on this yeah. hole, so that really makes the approach a little bit more intimidating because, you know, you really want to get as close to the water as possible uh, for your approach shot because I believe the closest point is about 270 feet, 250 feet, you know, yeah, unless think... you throw four shots, but I think, you know, on your third approach shot, that's how close you, you will be getting, so... You know, you definitely don't want to give yourself even more distance than you need to, to approach the, the green. Yeah. And you can see Irina's there. My disc is there. I know I, for sure, am never, I'm never going across on my third shot. Not currently. Um, but my second shot there, I really couldn't care less how far it went. Uh, because to be honest, I was like, you know, it doesn't matter how far it goes because then I'll have an easier third shot to really lay up to exactly where I want to be right next to that water. Mm -hmm. You're you're really throwing as far as you can for two shots and then placing your third. Like Raven's doing here, yeah. she doesn't care how far she goes. She wants to spike it in right at that grass line. There There's the 250, the 250 marker. That's, that's the common play there. Yeah. And... There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's smart. It's safe. You can still get uh, birdie if you play the next shot right. Yeah. And that's that's pretty amazing on this hole. So it looks like Irina, is this her second shot? This, She's going so over? third, yeah. Oh, this well, is second, third. yeah, that's where her second shot landed. And this would be her third going across. And I do believe that's Irina's play. Is yeah. She's very confident in her distance. She does have so much power. Um, We're braving the lake. <laughs> And uh, I, I think that that's her normal game plan here, which you have to give mad respect to people who, no matter, you know, no matter what they see other competitors do, they're sticking to what they feel is right. And as you can see here, for good reason, because she made it across it's and landed on the is that, boat. Is that oh, she's on the boat. <laughs> that's amazing. So there's a, a little boat over there. Um, and it's, it's inbounds. It's just a feature it's 
part of the course now. And Queen makes it right into the circle, just over the tall grass. We've got some uh, hot, hot geese appearances yeah. in here. <laughs> A few Canadian, hot Canadian <laughs> geese. Hong Kong, eh? <laughs> Oh, so good. And they will hiss at you. Yes. Contrary to popular belief, they do honk, but they hiss they if don't, you get too close. They don't adopt the uh, polite Canadian persona quite well. They're quite the opposite of Yeah, us. so you'll hear a lot of people call them cobra chickens <laughs> um, because they hiss at you, and they're not really birds. They just kind of chicken around. Like mm -hmm. You don't see them flying a lot, so <laughs> except when they're going south. <laughs> Irina goes for a big putt off the boat, <laughs> lands, lands within bullseye range. That was amazing. And, you know, even though she didn't make it across that first bid, she did just move up like 10 feet and throw again. So that is an incredible shot to make it across, you know, technically in three. Yeah. Ooh, great putt, Colleen. Because you can see me doing a little dance. I was so happy. I was a farther putt than I was, I think, the first round, and I made it this time. And I don't know that I had ever parred this hole. That's how it's a tough was. par because, again, every every shot, every foot kind yeah. of makes a difference here. And and the the approach of the basket is so technical, and you want to yeah. get so close. So, um, yeah, getting a par can be quite challenging. And you can see how frustrated Raven is there. Like, I felt that the first round, too. Like, I was so upset that I missed my par putt. Oh, man. Well, way to clean up nicely, Colleen, as we see your big putt here again. Got a lot of slow-mo Colleen putts this round. <laughs> That's all that putting practice in the winter. I hope you guys are out there practicing your putting. It is not time to sleep. It is definitely time to grind. Get you, comfortable. If you're not training in the off season right now, what are you doing? Hit up your local putt club, yeah. get out there. Unless you have a broken foot, then that's a good excuse. <laughs> that's the only excuse. <laughs> so right. let's do a quick recap of where everyone's sitting right now. So uh, Raven Klein is still sitting in first uh, with plus six. Colleen at plus uh, second up with plus 12. Jess in third with plus 17. And Arena, one stroke behind Jess, sitting in fourth. Uh, Karen Martell still, you know, making a charge from the chase card. She is. She has been right on us the whole time. So we got hole 13 here, um, par 3, 440 feet. It is a long bomb with a hazard in the front and a putting green as well that plays as OB. Uh, right in front of that, um, put, our putting green. And there's OB behind, so it's a very precarious small strip of grass to land on or else you are doing the layup play. And a lot of us, because of the distance being 440, are not looking to park this hole and get a birdie. We are definitely looking to play safe. Even if you get very close, the likelihood of you going OB behind is just not worth the risk. For a lot of us, you know. There might be those crazy ones out there. <laughs> the bold ones. So I see... You have some folks going out to the left where Colleen landed, and then yeah. um, I've seen a few um, people going right. Yes, and um, just kind of, so I, I kind of actually, I think uh, it was this hole that I accidentally did that on. Um, definitely did that in my practice round, but I do like this play, what me and Raven are doing. I think it's a safer, you know, you have so much open space. Oh, man. That what an so unfortunate gorgeous. roll for Raven. That looked like it landed in the perfect spot, but I guess just hitting hitting an unfortunate part of the hill and it's getting those a bad reaction. Paths. That's what you know, like it's it just it, something held it up on that line. When it skipped, it popped up She's and good. who knows if it was a stray rock or what. Just very unfortunate. Bad break for Raven there. Certainly, if that was me, that disc is getting benched. <laughs> that was not cool. I don't know if you guys do that at home, but if it is not treating me well that day, I'm not pulling you out. I don't <laughs> trust you. Sometimes, you know, you don't want to be throwing a disc that has bad juju on it. Yeah. And sometimes they've just lived their life and you need a new one, so. <laughs> it's a sign. Or a good excuse to buy my <laughs> disc. So, Irina is going up first. Um... She, she is one of the folks who play the right side, and that gives you a straight shot. 
However, if you put a little too much hyzer on, it's going to go down the hill. So uh, that's where Irina ends up. But it does give you a more straight shot at the basket. Yeah, the right side of the basket is really tight. So she's just looking to get there. Um, same thing with Jess. I think just she's a little bit shy and wanting to put a little bit extra on that, but uh, that happens. And Colleen just pinning it, not having to worry about making a putt at all. Just such a nice, precise upshot. Yeah, shout out to Ricky Waisaki for bringing back the slammer. A discontinued DD disc. Uh, that's one of the retro, like, old ones that they don't make anymore. So we would love those Lucid Slammers back, DD, not the retooled ones. Now Raven goes OB left of the signs there. Just airs her disc out a little bit too much. Yeah, I think um, frustration of that roll just kind of reeling her a little bit, but she's doing a great job holding her composure at this point. I'd be like mm -hmm. ripping my mini apart or something. It just, you know, sometimes when you have a shot that doesn't go your way, it's best to just take a deep breath, move on, focus on the next shot at hand. Uh, try your best not to let it get to you because, you know. Yeah, it's only one hole. It's one hole. Raven has quite a few um, strokes to play with here. So, you know, as long as you keep your composure, then it won't it won't snowball on you. So those are some, some mental game skills that you yeah. pick up along the way that will really help. And it's hard, honestly, you know, anyone new out there looking to get those kind of tips, it, it never goes away. Um it does get easier though and the more you practice that positivity the, the more naturally it comes but those those thoughts always creep in so you're not alone in feeling like frustrated with yourself or feeling like you're not doing a good job during your round it everyone does that it's just practice just like you would practice putting so um quite a roller coaster of a hole there and uh we got a little variety of scores so a par some bogeys and a double bogey there shout out to in the background oh, Dietrich yeah D in the background he was keeping you to score all round so thanks so much D for for coming out hanging out with the lead card being a scored. supporter yeah we love to see it and quite a crowd getting out there so thank you for all those people following us around so here we have hole 14 par 4 385 feet quite an uphill drive you want to land in line with this gap uh, so that you can have a nice easy up uh, upshot towards this basket on the other side of this ditch it's elevated it's on a slope on a rock so very tough green but you know I think a lot of us have the distance to get up to the gap Absolutely, Kat. I think that distance is, is really in our wheelhouse. It's so hard to land somewhere good, though. Yeah, because of the uphill nature of this hole, um, or how low it is. <laughs> it's just we have the distance, but you have to kind of press your disc, hang it out like wide and right in yeah. order to skip left. You don't want to be pinched off too much on the left, so. That was otherwise my the next shot is yeah. blind. Um, yeah, <laughs> don't be pinched off on the left. That's yeah. That's the the better miss is to go far right. Uh, then you have then the the gap is more attackable. Some good tips side. if you're um, if you're playing a brand new course and like for us this hole was brand new. Uh, no no one had played it before this tournament and it was technically still being built while we were practicing yeah. for the tournament. So. Um, when you're going to a hole that you're not completely comfortable with the game plan, one piece of advice I heard from Zoe and Dyke way back was look at the pro miss. If I miss my shot, if I do something wrong on my drive, what do I what would be the worst case scenario and how do I completely avoid it? That was amazing. Perfect. 
shout out to Raven. She laced that perfect spot. I'm farthest out just with having been so far away from the gap, but a nice line to go through, just a little hyzer. Wow, what a bold shot, Colleen. I I think a lot of players aren't necessarily doing that. Like no. that bold, <laughs> running it from, you know, that far out of the gap is very, very challenging. Um, you know, you have to, first you have to hit the gap and you have to get the distance and land in a great, you know, spot. So oh, I think you did great there. When you, you really trusted your When distance. you want an eagle, you want an eagle. But <laughs> I do feel like um, Irina had a really nice placement shot there, but what Jess did laying up to where she did, she's got a really good look at a birdie still. Yeah, she and still she's not a million, million feet past oh, like me. So, <laughs> so good. Raven doing a, uh, I kind of want it, but I just really want to be in, in bounds kind of putt. And we love that because that is safe and sound. Yeah. Ooh, Irina just... <laughs> Just skips over the, just gives a little bit of a skip over the, the banners there. Staying in bounds. That was a great little flip per disc, dude. So far, these signs have really been <laughs> helpful yeah. rather than hurtful. We've seen a lot of great reactions off them, so. Again, thank you, iTech, and the UDSA for placing those where you did. <laughs> yeah, sponsor is really pulling through here. <laughs> And like we set a par for us, so we're just uh, happy to be there, happy to not be um, screwing this hole up and looking at Raven getting a birdie on this hole. She was the only birdie on this hole today, which it is a par four. So like we said, you place that drive, it's pretty standard, like pretty easy birdie, but just so hard to get that drive perfect. Yeah. And any further, any further back than where Raven is, you you kind of have the risk reward of whether laying up or going for going across the valley. <laughs> Look at that fist bump! She was so happy she made that. Um, so hole 15, we're uh, really getting down to that green right before the water here, um, and just doing a little layup. That's the kind of standard preference. There's no point in putting the water in play because this second shot is a very standard 300 foot drive for us it's not anything too extreme and you do have your preference you can do a hyzer in or you can just go straight at it or forehand in so um, really what we're hoping for is to barely make it across and park the hole which is uh, a scary thought when you're looking at it so you That's might right. see a few go a little too far past yeah, there's a nice um, flat landing zone at the bottom of the hill just before the water. A little bit to the left of where Raven landed, the kind of the golf yeah, tee. Yeah. That's, that's the perfect spot to land just because it's a little more elevated and it kind of leaves you with a straighter um, approach shot to yeah. the green. So oh, yeah. I hear like Irina in the background going, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's that's what I mean. She's making me laugh the whole time. Staying, you know, staying, keeping things lighthearted, being goofy, just kind of like taking your mind off the nerves and keeping it nice and, and light is yeah. She's is a, a great way to approach the game. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we're four for four here. Ooh! Are you good? Jess takes a bit of a tumble, yeah. but she Jess. manages to get her shot down where everyone else. Do you do your own stunts, Jess? <laughs> so impressive today. I'm right. going, I have band-aids <laughs> if you need them. First aid's very important. Oh, uh, honestly, prepared. we had a provincials one time where I smoked my hand off a tree and nobody had band-aids, so I just carry them with me now. Sometimes you just got to learn from, from experience, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, Jess being a little upset, she's a little too short on her first shot and making that second shot just too more challenging than it needed to be. Um, but she'll advance a bit. And that's what we're talking about, about a just nice hyzer, land up there somewhere. Hopefully, don't skip too much. Just outside of circle one, I'm sure Raven will will be running her uh, birdie putt there. Irina's going for the water carry as well. Oh. Landing in the circle, great shot. That almost looked like it had oh, yeah. potential of going in. I can do cool things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can, Irina. I mean, you've been Irina's been showing us cool things all 
all tournament long, so. Oh, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> whole, whole six, round one. Oh, man, go back and watch Irina there. Colleen also landing in the circle. Well done. Playing this whole great. Sneaking across. We're talking about there's a way you can go around the pond on the right side. Um, and there's a sneaky gap. You can kind of hyzer this way if you want to go around. I never considered that line. I think that's... It's such a small landing yeah. zone that I wouldn't trust myself to, to throw that. As Jess also almost throws it in from, from her third shot. Let's see if Raven can make this make a clutch birdie putt here. Oh, oh. just a little low and of getting a brutal roll, but she'll she'll be near bullseye there. Coming with another birdie <laughs> run. Doing the same thing. <laughs> Saw Raven do it, thought that looks fun. Ooh, what a cool shot. Look at this artistic camera work. Arena hanging it out a bit wide, but again, she still has a stress free yeah. yeah. so Jess making good. I think that's her bogey save there. Yeah. And uh, Raven putting here with her rollback for par. That was just unfortunate. She's had a, a few of those rolls today, whether it be putts or drives, and just some unlucky things. You wonder how your day would have gone if you had been just a little bit luckier. That's right, but still keeping her cool. I mean, we have Colleen kind of slowly creeping her way up the leaderboard. Yeah, it's Only four strokes back of, of um, up. Raven, so we only have a couple of holes left here, so it's getting exciting. Yeah, three more holes, um, getting a little bit tighter. Three more holes, four strokes, so we can see. Uh, a little bit of a gap closing in. At one point we were only five strokes apart, so it's been going back and forth a bit, but closing it up. And uh, so our partially way through, we got Raven still in first, uh, me four back at plus 12, and then Jess and Irina tied right now in uh, third place with plus 19, and just shortly behind them, Karen Martell at plus 22. Kat trailing behind at plus 26, um, and Hannah trying to catch her at plus 28. And we got a three more holes, and they are some fun ones. 16. So hole 16, par three, 375 feet. You're throwing right towards this green here, only in a very narrow landing zone on the right side, um, with an uphill approach to the basket. OB surrounding it on the left, and you have a little strip of OB on the right. Um, Tricky tee shot. There's a few trees kind of on the left hand side, so you want to do your best to avoid those. Um, but if you go too, if you hide her too far left, you're in that OB, so yeah. I don't know. It, it's a very. It's a pushy distance mm -hmm. for us. I think, like we're going to see here with Raven, this is just barely getting over this kind of green. So you're kind of mainly counting on the fact that your disc is going to skip. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I do like the play of um, yeah throwing kind of like a hyzer skip shot off the green. Um, that's, you know, it's, it's risky, but, you know, if you know what your disc is going to do, if you trust your abilities, you're able to land in a really great spot. And Raven pretty much gets across the whole green, which is... What a crush, especially given how uphill this hole yeah. can be. I, um, I opted for going more right. It is a little bit... I'm not necessarily trying to land there. I'm trying to do what Irina's doing, where I land straight around the basket. Um, but just hooked a little right and got a really lucky landing on that little strip. But I really liked how Irina threw that. That's, that's definitely my game plan. So like that's what I was mentioning is if you go a little too early left you run into the chance of going OB. So Jess gets a little unlucky as she, you know, just barely makes it out of bounds on the left side. Split, splits the trees and then ends up punished anyways. Like that's just unlucky. Yeah. As the you can see right in front of her the inbounds area kind of bubbles 
in like a weird way. Up yeah. A little bit, if you were a little further up, it would have winded up a little bit for her, but that's just the nature of these these wild courses here. Falling with a nice upshot to get her par on this hole. Yeah. Elena looks like she's running this. Oh. Oh, oh that was beautiful. I loved that. It was nice and floaty. <laughs> oh. Andy's coming. <laughs> Oh, that was a, a great try. And she's absolutely right. She nailed the basket on that one. No more air balls, Irina. We know. You got this. Basket should be very afraid. I think that was a good little... Ah, I don't need to do too much good for uh, Raven there. Mm -hmm. She's not feeling too much pressure with, a, with that kind of lead. And like you want that birdie, but you definitely don't want that OB. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. If, I mean, at at this point, if Raven, you know, continues to par, she'll she'll take this one home. But you know, if Pauline gets, I mean, we have three holes coming up. Two. 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 Oh, sorry. Two yeah. Holes but one up. of them's an island, and one of them's a par four. Yeah. So you never know. Anything can happen. There's not enough birdies out there, but no. there's. Yeah. There's plenty of bogeys out there, <laughs> especially once you see the next hole, you'll know what I mean. That was nice. I believe that was her sheriff. Um, Checking to make sure when no, no, no. skip off the green, state of bounds. She likes that. Nice I love smiles. I love it. Big smiles after. She's always so happy. Yeah, what a great positive energy. And we got hole 17. If you are local to me, this is Bronte's signature island hole. That is the distance it was designed to be. So this is a new edit from this year, a different hole. The basket used to be off to the right. You can see this circle is the island. You have to land inbounds in the island to uh, be in. And then there is a bailout zone off to the left where there will be a drop zone if you don't make it in the island. Um, we did uh, give a shout out the first round, but we're, we're telling you, if you haven't checked it out, go look at Nico Forbes' Instagram and look up that video of him sinking a birdie on this hole. He laid up to that landing zone on the left. That's all nicely flagged. And then he went through those trees and nailed it. It was amazing. It's unreal. How old is Nico again? Like nine? Like nine. Yeah. yeah, that's no, I unreal. I can't wait to follow, follow where his yeah. goes. So young, so good, so much potential. And he has, uh, I think he's got a new buddy on his team this year, him and Alistair at oh, Ontario. Nice. Some junior prodigies yeah. from Team Innova. So, yeah, that was getting Raven Innova. getting a bit unlucky there, skipping out of bounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just oh, skipping oh, inbounds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Again, with the sign with the, the sign there. Giveth and the sign taketh away. I think that skip that Raven had was the first time we saw the signs yes. not help, but I mean, they didn't grow for her. How dare they not be taller? Right. But certainly have been very oh, lucky with the signs. <laughs> oh! It looks <laughs> amazing job from Arena. It looks oh like she through. kind of she like sneaks in between where the signs <laughs> were, so yeah. in the gap. <laughs> Breaking barriers. So the Literally. signs have been hit by the wind so much that they're kind of cracked, so she just like popped through one of the folds that is flapping in the wind there. Don't hard enough, you're gonna bust down the sides. Oh, just oh, not I'm quite just... getting the skip she needed to get over the sides. She hit the sign. She skipped oh, she? into it. Oh. So she had the skip, just needed that little bit of pop. There was a, from what I recall, there was a bit of a tailwind on this hole, so. Yeah. I feel like that adds to the the challenge of this hole because at that point you kind of have to hang something a little bit oh, wide, yeah. right? Oh. That was the most pitiful little <laughs> But it still it still works. Still went over. It's all that matters. It didn't bounce. <laughs> hey, Rena making some noises yeah. there. Got some um, colorful yeah. sound effects for you. And then we have a little, because my disc, and then Jess is like, I'll just go yeah, yeah, mark yeah. mine too. So. <laughs> that way you don't step on her disc. Yep. Yeah. 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 Early yeah. in. Right off the cage. We've oh. got the big gallery <laughs> with the cheers there. We have a, a big gallery set up by the green of Holy Teen. You can't see it here, but it's up, uh, up on the Woo! hill. 
yeah. people excited to see the conclusion of this FPO round. Yeah, what a great idea by the organizers to put, they put bleachers, they rented some bleachers, and you can see the last three holes. So it was so cool to finish your round, go grab a drink, whatever your preferred beverage, um, from the clubhouse and go hang out on those bleachers and watch everyone come in. It was just phenomenal. Uh, Raven feeling a bit frustrated, um, missing her four putt there, so she's tapping in a five. Um, Irina getting her par, um, and just getting uh, her bogey there. So we're gonna move into the last hole um, with a little bit of a change up. That was a three-stroke swing there. Wow, that was another clutch putt from from you, Colleen, to to really put the pressure on in the last hole. Yeah, shout out to Gateway, not sponsored, but I love my wizards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we are, final hole, hole 18, par four, 630 feet. Um, you have this mando to left of these trees, I Yeah, believe. and that's the drop zone there. Yeah. And so that's where most people are gonna wanna land, just past those trees. And then you have this uphill approach shot um, right up to this pond that's in, uh, right behind the green. And then your last shot, you're just gonna wanna be laying it up as close to the basket here as possible. Green is surrounded by OB and is a bit sloped, so. Very tough. In the past, the tough. green has not been an island, so very tough. Just adding just another extra layer of, of difficulty on this hole, making it really exciting. For this round. Doing uh, the classic, everyone's got to do fist bumps at the last hole or it's bad luck. <laughs> you have to. You know, really a testament to the, um, the camaraderie in FPO in, on this card. Everyone's just uh, rooting for each other. Lots of great vibes. Lots of support within oh, the division. So nice. Beautiful flex shot from Irina. She's got some power on her, man. Can't wait to see her this year. She's getting out to more tournaments. She went and did a little stint in the States and Yeah, I see that she did pretty well down yeah, there. Yeah. She's phenomenal. And like I said, I, you can just feel that passion. It's not mm -hmm. just like she's a pleasant person and happy. She has so much passion for disc golf. It's just wonderful. Yeah. And a nice shot from all four ladies getting out there. Looks like exactly the Go same spot out. for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> just following each other's lead. Um, and this second shot, like, we all swung it out way to the left because, as you can see, now we've set up for another hyzer, which I prefer. Um, there's some big bushes there that you really don't want to be behind. And we're just landed. That's kind of the preferred landing spot. It's nice and flat, and the approach is a little bit downhill, and you have a nice, clear view of the basket. Uh, depending on where you land, there's some bigger bushes, so... If you get a bit unlucky, you might kind of have to throw from behind a bush, limiting your visibility. But for the most yeah. part, if you are landing on that top of the hill, you'll have a nice view of the basket on your on the crucial final up shot. Very touchy. Up and shot. this is Irina going for it on her second shot because she is a mad woman <laughs> and intensely powerful. Uh, to be honest, if she had nailed that line a little bit more left, I think she would have made it. That was a huge pump. I don't know where this girl came from, but just so exciting to watch. Yeah, I love that she goes for those shots. I think uh, really she's trusting gets... her game plan and her yeah. abilities. When she gets more tournament experience um, and more, like, she already has a lot of confidence, but more, like, of that touchiness about what you do and don't want to do, I, she's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, really. um, there's uh, some nice shots on the green and, like, like we said, it's not a it's not a particularly easy green to land on, but one of the hardest parts is getting close enough to that basket for your final putt to be easy. That's right. Yeah, as if you know, if you land on the right side, you have a downhill putt, which can be a little intimidating. So you definitely landing on the left side is a little bit easier. As Colleen practically throws it in. That so. was some solid caddy advice. <laughs> I. And what did the caddy say to you there? Uh, nothing. Uh, I went, should I throw this or this? And then he went, I don't know, uh, what do you, 
most go over? He just kind of let me answer it mm-hmm. um, and delayed until I finally went, oh, I think this one. And he's like, yeah, 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 totally. That's what I was going to say. Great answer. An amazing final cut from Jess to finish her tournament off strong. What a what a performance she put on in front of this big crowd. Yeah, she had a she had a great last two rounds to pull herself up from the second round up to the lead card for the third round and then played wonderful today. And just a it even little... looks like she had to run that putt to really yeah. have a chance at at getting the the win right here. Yeah, so we are one stroke apart. We are fully aware. Um Raven knew she needed to make that to put the pressure on me yeah. and to solidify her win. So Boy, was I feeling that pressure, and man, did I uh, definitely think I was just as surprised as everyone else to <laughs> find out the results of that. Well, you handled the pressure really well, and now you have forced a layoff. Like, cannot get any more exciting than that. <laughs> yeah. Playoff at Canadian Nationals. In front of a huge crowd, in front of, you know, home base, you got all the local fans here rooting for you. What are you what are your thoughts going into a playoff, especially a, in a tournament of this caliber? Um, I think I first and foremost was just so excited to have made it to that point. Um, going into this round and being as far back as I was from Raven, I think it was 10 strokes. Um, to come back and be able to tie, not necessarily, you know, because I played phenomenal or Raven played bad, but just to have that happen is crazy. So yeah, you made a huge charge. You played so solid in that last round, making some huge putts, um, just playing yeah. all around amazing. And here we go, sudden death playoff. We're playing well 16 through 18 on repeat until we have a winner. Here <laughs> we go. Look at this dramatic slow-mo walk up with the music. We've got Raven Klein facing off against Colleen McInnes. It all comes down to this, folks. Can you feel the electricity in the air? Oh, yeah. Boom. <laughs> so we are back at a whole 16. Um, and as you know, we have bleachers in the background. There is a crowd following. There is some pressure on the line. There is a lot of money. There is a national title. So we are looking to not only do what we just did, well, certainly what I just did on those three holes, but do it better and do it again right after you just did it. You can see Corey uh, standing over there with the champion's jersey, flipping off for who's going to go first. And here we go, Colleen with the first row. So this hole typically played for par. Are you trying to change up your game plan here? What do you, what's your strategy going into this hole? Um, like I said, that was actually the best shot I've had on this hole during the tournament. Um, both times I kind of hung it out too right. So I, I was just trying to go, okay, now I can fix that mistake, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and just wanting to get just safely across the green. I know me and Raven both have the power for it. So it was all about like, just don't hang it out left. Make sure it's far enough right, you know, make sure it's flat, don't go nose up. And then certainly here, you know, definitely trying to go for that putt, but not trying too hard. Right. <laughs> I think Raven definitely lining this up to go for it. Mm -hmm. Makes a great bid for it, just barely left. A um, little scary with the OB right behind, but looks like you'll both be walking away from this hole with par so on to the next hole yeah and we we as soon as we both as soon as raven did her second shot we both were like okay we're going to the next hole like those were just tap-ins we were super confident and we were just having the best time um like i said this hole is exactly like one of our signature holes at my home course designed by one of the designers of my home course um and it is exactly the distance that you know we can make on a consistent basis but the narrowness of this is so intimidating and like you had mentioned before there was a lot of wind out there a lot of wind and that that landing zone is lends to skips quite well like big skips 
So you really don't want to, you know, you really have to be careful how you hang up your disc. You don't want to hang it too left or too right. As Raven just sticks her drive and her landing perfectly. Yeah. And I, no messing around with signs. Yeah. <laughs> I think a huge relief uh, from her going OB the first time uh, during this round to making it in and a lot of pressure put on me here. This goes a little wide. Let's see if you can get big. <laughs> Oh. So I was like, get in there, but it didn't work. And part of uh, what I, you know, I that was a Thunderbird. I really feel like it should have gone more left, but it, it was quite a, you can see the flag kind of going left to right and just maybe should have gone with something a little bit more stable. Oh, oh. as you can almost save your par from the drop zone. What a great bid to, to really get that last... A little bit of push that you need to to give it a run. Yeah, and so. I was trying to put that pressure on Raven. Like, you better make this putt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if Raven makes his putt. Which she does, just she for is. good measure, Woo! making sure she gets that birdie. And that that relief that it's finally over. You did it, Raven Klein, your 2023 Canadian National Champion. And new honorary Canadian. Honorary Canadian. You are one of us for life now. That's right. I hope you come back next year to defend your title. Next year, Nationals out in BC. Yes, that's right. We're so excited. That's finally been announced. Out in BC for our next Canadian Nationals in September. tied after regulation as well. Congrats, Colleen. You made a great run. You played so amazing. You really made this quite an exciting final round. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming out today. It was really fun playing up here and I definitely want to come back, so. <laughs> awesome, Raven. Look at that giant paycheck and that beautiful hockey jersey, just so on brand. Big shout out there to Corey and uh, Chris Ozolins for uh, being our, our TDs at that course. Um, we had lots of TDs out there. Thank you to the ODSA for running this event. Just a phenomenal event. If you get your way up to Thunder Bay, I highly recommend you go play this course. Um, make a trip of it. It's a wonderful community. You won't regret it. And, and here we have, let's do a final recap of how things shook out with Nationals. Raven in first, Colleen in second. Irina coming in third, and Jess Gia uh, rounding off our lead card in fourth place. Um, so thanks again, everybody, for watching. Um, if you like this content, please consider joining our Patreon, patreon.com slash parkedpro. Um, please like, share, and subscribe, and watch for more content.